Today on Encore, the director who discovered Jennifer Lawrence discusses her latest film, Leave No Trace, as it's released in France. Adapted from the book My Abandonment by Peter Rock, the film centers on a father and daughter who live off the land, away from society, in a national park in the United States. <laughs> It's not a drill. I sat down with Deborah Granick at the Cannes Film Festival for the premiere. Stand up. Deborah, congratulations on the film. Oh, thank you. It's been eight years since your last feature film, and which uh, earned four Oscar nominations, Winter's Bone. Um, what brought you to this story? I really enjoyed the novel, and it was presented to me as a story that would be feasible, that would be doable, you know, and the scope of it. And I, I, I played the story out in my mind when I read it, and it's very visual, very textural, and there was a beautiful journey in there. And I, I was, I thought, I thought it was a good, good next project. Respond true or false to each question. Who taught you how to read? My dad teaches me. You're actually quite a bit ahead of where you need to be. I wake up rested and peaceful most mornings. True. My day-to-day -day life is full of things that keep me interested. True. What do you think about this idea of living cut off from society, like the characters in your film do? I'm very interested when people make that choice. I think it's uh, among the most disciplined choices that people can do when they, when they do it very purposefully, not, you know, not necessarily by difficult circumstances that just force them that way. But, um, and I, I like to know philosophically why they're doing it, what, what, what they're opting out of. And um, there's been, you know, it's a, it's a, that's a through line of history. People that, that try to deviate from the norm or from, from the ubiquity of something uh, in all cultures, all times. And so that, that, that's a very rich part of the big picture of history. In 2018, though, it's, it's hard to opt out, isn't it? Yes, yes. So that was, it was an extra level. I mean, and yet the yearning is even more palpable on some level, you know. It's not the first time you've made a film about the marginalized um, figures in US society. Snake Feed, Down to the Bone, Winter's Bone. What attracts you to these stories? I'm attracted when, when the security or the, the, the surety that people are, just have it all laid out for them, that there's a path for them, a niche for them, is all set up. I'm, I'm interested when people don't have that and they have to forge ahead and they have to navigate. And the stakes are very high because it's not given to them. They have to seek it, they have to obtain it, and, uh, and often fight for it. And, and that, that's something that, you know, I'm always, I'm, I'm rooting for such things to happen. I, I, I want people to get what they need. You're largely credited um, with launching Jennifer Lawrence's career. Um, since she was in your film, Winter's Bone, she's had three Oscar nominations, she's won an Oscar. Did you have any idea how far she was gonna go? No, you can't predict how machinery can crank up, like crank up. And, who can predict this kind of thing? You know, who can predict uh, this kind of um, kind of hegemonic plastering of, of certain kinds of star machinery? You know, and, and and it's it's quite something, right? And then social media just amplifies that, right? So, and Tom is in Harcourt Mackenzie um, is the star of this film, and um, plays the young girl, the daughter. Can you see her career going far? Because she's quite new, isn't she? She is. Um, Oh, I think so. I think there'll be a lot of people that will enjoy working with her, and I think she might pick a different path, perhaps. Um, Is it a good know? thing to like shoot to fame when you're young so quickly, do you think? No, I think it looks very, very hard, but some people manage it well, and I think and that's a very, a very strong sense of self and focus and, and being able to tune out things at times. And, uh, you know, I can't fathom it, but clearly some people do it. <laughs> I wanted to talk about your new project, um, Nickel and Dimed, based on the book of the same name, um, which looks at the situation for low-wage workers in the United States. It makes me think of um, I, Daniel Blake, yes, which yes. won the Palme d'Or here um, a few years ago. What can you tell us about the new project? It is in, in, I think it is in, the, in, a, in a lineage or in a spirit with I, Daniel Blake, in the sense that, uh, well, he's someone, Loach is someone I admire very much. But the fact is that it is looking at the lives of everyday people and it's looking at the push that has to come to survive and, and even when people are working very hard, you know. So that's, that's the part that I'm most interested in. 
what happened to the agreement that if you worked 40 hours, if you gave that much of your life each week, that you couldn't live off that? How much more are you supposed to give of, of your actual time on this planet, you know? Why can't we make it work, you know? But in the meantime, what, all you can really do is, is, is try to show some of the stories that come from that, that, that challenge, that struggle, that, that determination, and see if you, you know, looking for the nobility, looking for the nobility and of what it takes to actually survive in an economy that's that unforgiving. And 82 women um, earlier in the festival marched on the red carpet uh, in protest against the power imbalance in the film industry. And um, it was 82 because 82 women and female directors have been in competition since the festival began compared to, I think it's 1,688 male directors. That's what I heard. Yeah, that's the number I heard. Why is there such a big difference, do you think? If you list all the number of women editors, you've got a different story about how many people have been making films, right? It's just who got all the glory, who got all the, oh, who got all the attention, who got the spotlight, who got that, that thing that's so omnipotent, which you called an auteur, and you're just all that, even though you had 50 people, 60 people working on your film. So there's a way in which we want to pin certain things. We want, for commerce sake, we want to believe in the, the myth of the single genius, right? The, the autonomous genius. The, the disparity in numbers is because a system that was not very receptive to women working in it. So there's no surprise that the numbers would be so canted and so distorted. Have you experienced sexism in your career? I remember one meeting in Hollywood, <laughs> no, Hollywood um, where a, a guy said, oh, sit down, I'm pleased to meet you. It was one of those will call, you know, your film gets attention or it's nominated for something and a bunch of people invite you in for these sham meetings, you know. And uh, he, he, he proceeded to tell me 88 directors that he really loved working with. He read, the, you know, he kind of showed me this big impressive list. And I noticed there was nary a woman on it. You know, there was not one. And I was like, oh, I think I came to the wrong office. Why am I sitting in this chair? It seems like you don't work with women. You know, I mean, it, you know, he's like, oh, well, we're get, we, we want to, you know, we would like to in, so, in some years to come. We're thinking about it. Oh, I was like, I can't believe I wasted my afternoon. You know, I could have enjoyed a plum by the ocean. You know? <laughs> Can you see a time when it will be 50-50 in the film industry for directors? Only if there's some content shifts. There are a lot of women that want to blow up a whole lot of things and a lot of women that want to direct films with serial killers and, and, you know, and uh, knives really hurting other humans' flesh and shooting them at point blank and putting gasoline in their open wounds. But then there's not that many, maybe. You know, I don't know. It depends. The content has to change. Some of the bloodlust has to change, I think. The sanctity of life has to be regarded more, I think, in the film industry, for, for that many more women to want to be in the mainstream of the film industry. On the margins, oh, hell yes, you know. Where does that change have to come from then? Is it the audience? Is it Hollywood? It's all of the above, right? If you narrow the options, you say, wow, all-time high ratings for this very violent show. But all of them were violent, you know? So it's like saying, well, violence is in. People love it. It's a good time. I want to say it's um, a little bit of a Moebius strip or something labyrinthical, right, where you can't decipher the exact reason why we get to this place. But sometimes I think it's out of um, economic frustration. It's very satisfying for some people to see something solved, very point blank, but just eliminating the other person or eliminating the problem as if you could shoot it away. You can't shoot away being poor. You can't shoot away not having a decent wage or being treated respectfully at your job. You can't just shoot that away. So I do think uh, it's born out of a, a profound economic frustration. Are you feeling positive about the future? I look, that's my job, is to look for that. I, I, I feel worried about the future so frequently, great worries. And I, my job is to go look for, for signs of hope, for acts of human kindness, for times when people do right by each other, for times when people do uh, outstanding things or, or make things better. So I, I'm, I'm a hunter for that. Okay, Deborah, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. Uh, Pick your things. Did you even try? Because I can't tell. Somebody said this unspeakable love to me. Where's your home? With my dad. Same thing that's wrong with you isn't wrong with me. Where are you guys headed? 
I don't think we knew where we were going. It's the first anniversary of France 24's Spanish language channel. To mark the occasion, our team of journalists has been traveling across South America. An 11,000 kilometer journey, bringing you a series of reports on the continent's economic and cultural diversity. From the Rio Grande to Tierra del Fuego, join us as we explore South America's cultures and communities from September 24th to 30th. France 24 Espagnol a un an et cela n'aurait pas été possible sans vous. Merci. We are so proud of what our sister channel in Bogota achieves on a daily basis. Joyeux anniversaire. Feliz cumpleaños. Chocolat les Omala en Afi, Bogota. Happy birthday. Joyeux anniversaire. Feliz aniversario a France 24.